Hello everyone, welcome to this video. My name is Amir Sen Ahrari, I'm a Google Earth Engine expert. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do a spatio-temporal analysis in the Earth Engine platform using normalized difference vegetation index. Let's go to the Earth Engine platform based on JavaScript programming in the code editor environment. So, first of all, you need to identify your region of the interest. As I'm going to work with the coarse spatial resolution data because of high temporal frequency and also its continuity, uh, it would be better to select a big region, for example, in national scale. So in this, uh, in this video, I'm gonna select whole of my own country as a region of a study. So, because I want to use coarse spatial resolution data that's definitely useful for the national, continental, and global scale studies. So, for the programming step, first of all, we need to have focus on the study area through map.center objects. Map.center object on geometry. So, then we need to call Modis uh, normalized difference vegetation index pro, uh, product since 2000 to now. Through their search places and dataset, just type Modis vegetation. A diverse set of vegetation products available from Modis uh, on Terra and Aqua satellites with 16 days, and also the daily format is also available with 250 meter to one kilometer spatial resolution. So as I'm gonna to work in a national scale for a big region, I prefer to work with one kilometer data, but the method of programming is same for 200 meter, 500 meter, and one kilometer. And no matter which kind of product you are, use, you are using. Actually, the main thing is that call a satellite data here and then uh, apply the functions I introduce you here. So, for example, I want to use 60 days global uh, Terra Modis NDVI product with one kilometer spatial resolution. Then I import it into the code as an image collection. Then make a variable entitled as Modis equals to, so now I want to assign image collection to the Modis variable. Then, as I'm working with this coarse spatial resolution, no need to define any filter bounds, just remember to set the filter date here. It's very important for the time series analysis and specifically a spatial temporal analysis because we want to measure how much NDVI changes compared to the time. For example, as a uh, Modis Terra data available since 2001, so I started with 2001 to 2021. So, the 20 years selected for the uh, for this study for the last 20 years, every 16 days, I have one NDVI image for whole of country. So, a multi-temporal composite like 60 days and 80 days and 18 days are very, very useful for the time series analysis because uh, they have higher quality, less noises, and less cloud cover, and also it is already uh, processed and also ready to use for the further processing steps and information extraction. And as you know, Google Earth Engine platform is one of the best platforms, not only for the uh, uh, satellite data analysis, but for uh, time series analysis and also uh, monitoring and change detection and highly recommended for the environmental monitoring. So, in the next step, we need to select the desired band. As image collection here, including different bands regarding to the vegetation condition, such as NDVI, EVI, and also surface reflectance bands, I need to select NDVI and remember that there is a scale factor for the NDVI, uh, such as 0.3, uh, 0 and 1, that is here, you can see it, it is a little big value with a, li with a lot of zeros, and also sometimes it's difficult to uh, pronounce it very well. So just copy NDVI band here, 
and back to the code and select the NDVI band. So then use, uh, using the print, you can see that how many modis images available in this period of time for this region or global. 460 elements available uh, over the last 20 years as uh, over the uh, since 2001 to 2021. Uh, starting from 2001 with the NDVI and also the properties such as system time start is also available and uh, Remember that system time start is really really important things for the time series analysis now I want to do a special temporal analysis to see that how much NDVI changing compared to the time uh, for the 2001 to 2021 Hopefully, there are a lot of ready-to-use function and scripts in the Earth engine that enabling us to do the times spatial temporal analysis very, very easy. So, first of all, I'm gonna use a linear regression method for the time series analysis. Before then, I need to select, I need to convert system time start from a millisecond format to or from a number format to an image format. Now I make a function here, as you can see, in this function that is, for example, modis and time band, I want to have NDVI and time for each date uh, as a single element. So now each input images considered as an IMG here, in the parentheses, I can write the uh, function body. So now make a new variable time equals to from each input image through the metadata function we can convert the system time start from a property to an image then in order to so in the next step i want to apply see our i want to add system time start band to the ndvi in each date return NDVI for each date with that add band time band so and then we need to have properties property of input images for the outputs so that's the first step and it's necessary to do before further programming or before further processing for the time series analysis so the time is an important and the independent variable that should be considered in all the computations. So, regarding to the change detection, because we want to see the change regarding to the time. So, and for the next step, I want to apply this function on each available element under modis variable. So, make a new variable, and it is modis time equals to, I want to get all modis images and then throw that map applying ndvi time on each available data so print modis time just like that in the right side you can see again we have 460 elements but this time for each date we have two bands one band ndvi and another band is system time start so for the next step we need to set which one of these bands is for example which one of these bands are independent variable and which one is dependent variable as we want to see or measure ndvi changes regarding to the time meaning that ndvi is dependent variable and time is independent variable so for the next step make a new variable i want to use a linear regression as a technique for the assess the variation of the ndp ndvi compared to the time first call modis time variable and then throw the select the first variable is independent variable that is system time start and the second is NDVI as the dependent variable. So, but uh, remember, to uh, we need to apply a scale factor on each NDVI images. But I think 
based on my opinion, it's not necessarily, it is not necessary to apply NDVI scale factor here because the relative change of NDVI's matter for us, not absolute values. And also, if you don't apply a, a scale factor for the NDVI in such kind of techniques, it doesn't matter. And also, but when, for example, imagine that you want to set a threshold uh, to, differ uh, to differentiate the water and vegetation from each other. In that case, uh, applying a scale factor is important. But here, just we want to see that how the NDVI value changes relatively. And also, as a relative value is also important, and we don't have any uh, specific or identified period range of value for outputs in the change detection by these statistical techniques, you don't need necessarily to apply the scale factor here. Because when we apply a scale factor, uh, it reduces the uh, speed of processing and causes uh, some problems regarding to user memory limit exceeded in the next step and cause the huge delays to showing the final result to show the final results for the platform and you are as an expert you must write the code as simple as you can to have access to maximum capability of the platform for the further and more important processing steps so, and after selecting system time start and NDVI using reduce, we can use a linear feed as a linear regression to assess the slope of NDVI changes compared to the independent variable. First engine dot reducer dot linear feed. So, the linear feed will have two outputs. One is, one is a scale and another one is offset. The scale is a slope, no difference, with the different name just. And here, as I'm gonna to work with the scale to see the uh, slope of changes, just select the scale as a main output. So, then through the map.add layer, we can see the linear changes, linear regression. So, I want to have access to the linear regression. Visually, I want to see that how can I interpret the result? It's very important things. So don't remember to clip it based on the region of the interest. I keep I leave the visualization characteristic empty, and also you can define some po color palettes to have a better and simpler uh, actually. Uh, interpretation for the output. So the minimum, maximum, the minimum and maximum value now is a little uh, undefined because we don't know what is minimum and what is maximum. You can get minimum and maximum from the output, but it is not uh, necessary here. The only thing is matter is a set a palette for the output, and also here we have a palette equals to. A combination of three different colors is very helpful to interpret the change images. Uh, the combination of, for example, red for the decreasing region and black for those of regions that we don't, that we didn't have uh, any significant changes, and also green for referring to those of regions that uh, experience the significant changes. So. And then I'm using false to avoid from automatic visualization process. Save your code and also run the code. After a few moments here, oh, just one, one thing missed here. I should use layer name here. The layer name is linear regression and then run the code. So code is running and the output is ready. So here linear regression output is ready and check it on 
and wait to see the result. Very low contrast, enabling to see anything and differentiate different values. So to have a better interpretation, you need to enhance the contrast by 90% stretching. As you can see, the main domain uh, ranges from minus values to the positive values. When I applied here, uh, generally, those of pixels with the negative value showing red and those of pixels that experience not significant changes are dark or black and those of pixels showing increasing in DVI uh, appear or you can see them with a green color. So using the inspector we can check different values in the results. For example if I click on this region uh, as a green color you can see that wow it's very very small values in order to have a better interpretation for the outputs, uh, that, that such kind of uh, inappropriate range of values happened because of the uh, some weird values in the system time start or very long values in the system time start. And also, if we divide system time start values to one million or one billion, actually, so we will have a better uh, range of values in the output. So, as you can see, the final result is visualization, is under visualization process, and now I increase the contrast by 90%. So, Now, by the inspector, I can check the value changes. Nothing changed except uh, the range of values or the uh, size of the values. You can see that, for example, the, uh, the green region showing uh, that NDVI values, for example, in this pixel increased by 1.9. And also in the red region, like this, you can see that we have a negative value showing that NDVI has a decreasing value in this region and decreased by 0.8. By the linear regression or a spatiotemporal analysis, we can see the changes and, and the intensity of changes, the slope of changes, and the direction of the changes can be detected. Negative values reduction or declining but the positive values increasing and also when uh, and also uh, the bigger values positive or negative shows uh, showing higher intensity or high intensity or more intensity in the results for example when we have a pixel with minus 0.8 meaning that the intensity of reduction in this pixel is much bigger than a pixel with uh, 0.0 or uh, compared to a pixel with minus 0.3, 0.03. So uh, both of them has negative value, but uh, the first one uh, has uh, experienced uh, higher uh, experience higher declining or. Uh, more decreasing experienced in the first value. That should be considered for the interpretation of the results. So, and also that's the same rule in the green spaces. And for example, he, uh, here we have 0.5, but here we have 1.5. 1.5, both of them showing increasing NDVI, but the second one showing more increase compared to the first value. So we can do the, uh, we can repeat this process or do this process by different functions or different statistical methods in the Earth engine. No need to further programming techniques and no need to write multiple programming code and complicate it because we are not programmer actually. 
we are environmental scientists, earth scientists, and most of the time we want to use satellite data as an end user to know that what's going on in our study area. If you are a programmer, it's okay for you to write everything by the coding techniques. But for the earth scientists, because uh, their job is another thing, uh, it's not important. Also, it's not significant if they want to write very, very complex and take um, time consuming programming codes with lots of uncertainties. So here, uh, I want to show you the other functions available here. For example, and another method is Seneslope another statistical method that is really really popular for the uh, trend analysis is the Seneslope techniques and also it's very simple and easy to use with a few programming code so as you can see here I make a new variable Seneslope and modistime.select independent variable time dependent NDVI a reducer instead of linear fit just replace it by seneslope and dot select and as seneslope may, uh, may be containing different outputs first we can check it what we will have after seneslope runs so here we want to get a print from seneslope You can see that two bands is available, one of them is slope and the other one is offset. So same as previous example, we use dot select a scale, but instead of a scale here, we have a slope to show the magnitude of changes, magnitude of changes, slope, and then throw the map dot add layer copy and paste it here just we have seneslope and the layer name instead of linear regression we have sense slope run the code and as you can see the seneslope image is updating It's a little time consuming process compared to the linear regression because its equation is a little complex compared to the first one and so takes a little more time to visualize the entire region of the interest. We can see that working with coarse spatial resolution is very very beneficial for the large scale studies. And also sometimes people asking me about using Landsat images for the national scales in the big regions. But it's absolutely incorrect using Landsat for the larger scales. We can use Landsat and Sentinels for the local scales. For example, for a province or a smaller, not for a country, specifically for a big country. And also would be better for the larger scales use coarse spatial resolution data. It is more efficient and faster and also the results are less noisy because too much details causing lots of noises in the results. So and as you can see it's a little time consuming. I try to do visualization by checking and check out and then increase the contrast by 90% increase and also you can see that again the range of values uh, are from minus to positive and then apply it just need a little you need to be patient when you are working with some functions and also we tried to write a code as simple as we can and also without any complexity to increase the speed of processing so and also if a visualization process takes a lot of time 
would be better to get export by export that image to drive and import it into the desktop software for the further analysis and even for the interpretation. As I mentioned earlier in the previous uh, uh, in the previous videos, in my YouTube page is also available to get export from the output. Just write export that image to drive just like that. Some of the arguments should be considered here. The first argument is image. So I want to get uh, export from the send slope result, that is a slope image. I want to clip it based on the region of the interest and the description name for the output is send slope result and the scale is 1000 meter because I'm working with the data with one kilometer spatial resolution. The region of the interest is geometry and maximum pixels. Uh, maximum pixels for the output should be equal to 1E13, the maximum possible uh, pixels that we can get uh, uh, in a single frame from the Earth engine and also the four, and also the CRS, the spatial resolution for the WGS84 EPSG equals to 4326. And then you can run the code and save it through the task uh, that is available in the right side panel. So as you can see, image completely loaded here by the inspector, for example, I uh, pick a pixel and you can see its value in two different methods. In linear regression, showing increasing NDVI and also in the same, uh, slope same. And also, but the, uh, the magnitude of changes in the center slope uh, uh, is lower than what, it, uh, what is estimated uh, in the linear regression. And also the absolute values cannot be really comparable because the method of estimation in linear regression and sinus slope totally different and we can adjust we can judge about the uh, increasing or decreasing when we are comparing two different methods but the absolute values could be differ because of the could be different because of the uh, different methodology so and for the next step if you run the code, as I mentioned earlier, in the task, you can get export from the stainless slope by clicking on run and again on run. And then you should, uh, you should wait until the output will be saved in the Google Drive. And when the save process is done, the tab color turn to blue, just like this. And then you can pick it up from the Google Drive and open it up in the uh, desktop software such as ArcGIS Pro and on and on it goes. So, and also we can use man candle method for the time series and for the spatial temporal analysis. So, man candle is one of the well known statistical methods that's used for the trend analysis. So, here Hopefully, its function is also available in the Earth Engine platform, and also you don't need to write complex programming techniques or something like that. You can see that just I copy the previous code here again, and but this time the name is mancandal equals to modis time that select system time start and NDVI, but here only NDVI is enough because in the mancandal. We don't need to set uh, uh, dependent and independent variable, just we want to show the uh, changes in the NDVI values. So here, Earth and that already used, but instead of the Sene slope, we will have man candle. I think it is correlation candle method. Let me check it in the doc part. In the left side, there is a part entitled as docs. If you write about the trend, 
you can see all the methods available in this regard. You can see that candles correlation is available. So just reducer dot candles correlation. Just candle correlation. Let's see what we will have in the outputs. So to visualize the outputs, use the map dot add layer here. But here we want to see the man candle dot clip geometry and layer name is man candle and run the code code is running and the output appeared in the layers and but here uh, there is no bands to visualize uh, it seems uh, something wrong in the uh, calculations so let me to print it and uh, print man candle to see what is wrong here. So in the console, we have two bands, but, uh, oh yes, the problem is that when the output containing more than one band, we cannot use palette. So uh, as you can see here, we have NDVI tau that shows the NDVI changes with positive and negative values and ranging from minus one to positive one and also the p-value showing the significance of the changes so as long as ndv p-value is uh, less than 0 0.05 meaning that the changes or the estimated trends significantly true with uh, or significantly meaningful with 95 percent confidence so First, I want to use NDVI tau to visualize the output. That select NDVI tau to see the changes. So scroll down and zoom in in your region and click on man candle. Hope it is a little faster compared to previous method. I'm using a stretching technique by 90%. And one benefit of man candle here is that the output values ranges from minus one to the positive one. And we have a restricted domain that's enabling us to have a simpler uh, interpretation about the magnitude of the changes and the direction of the changes so then click on apply and check the man candle on now you can see that it's a little faster and i hope stretching apply it to see that how the output values changes to increase the contrast again i'm using a stretching techniques and apply and now we have a better visualization with higher contrast and easier interpretation so and by the inspector if you click on each pixel here you can see the value changes or NDVI changes in different methods in the man candle in the Senna slope in the linear regression and also if you click on the red region in the man candle showing decreasing NDVI by this magnitude magnitude and And, and also the other values in the linear regression and also the senestro. So, and also in the next, uh, we can try with the other functions available for the trend analysis in the Earth Engine platform. And also the next method is about the format trend that is another useful method for the time series analysis. So, and here, just make a new variable for example here we have a format trend by the modis time 
and also we need to have for example only NDVI is enough here and also no need to add uh, the uh, independent variables such as the time just we want to get the trend here not the change of values regarding to another uh, criteria or the variable so here instead of the reducer just we need to use that format trend that is a long term that is a method to ca calculate uh, long term and short term trends and also uh, you can see its explanation completely available here dot format trend so just you can add something regarding to covariates that has a, that a, the, which has uh, contributing in the NDVI monitoring or you can set a window size for the short term monitoring but as the long term monitoring here is matter uh, we leave all of them uh, empty as null here just I want to get the output results and see them by the map.add layer to visualize the outputs calculated here compared to the other methods we already talked about them format trend here select no bands because we don't know what the output uh, what the output will be and just uh, we need to remove the palette here because we will have multiple bands and in order to avoid any further errors we need to uh, leave, uh, leave it actually uh, we need to mm, leave it empty for the visualization process and also again add forma here and run it again so the fourth method for the trend analysis is ready or the fourth result and the output including long trend long TS statistic short trend and Hansen Hansen a statistic just we want to see the long-term trend by 90% by 90% stretching applying and then click formal or check it on and now in the gray scale format you can see the changes the darker region uh, showing decreasing trend the lighter region or the brighter region showing increasing trend so the positive values increasing NDVI and the negative values decreasing NDVI if I close it here by the inspector you can see for example in this pixel uh, we have a long trend value positively uh, same as sine slope NDVI tau in the Mankendall method and linear regression and also for the other regions here you can see that we have a negative trend NDVI decreasing in this time and then you can see that in all the methods showing a decreasing trend so I hope you like the tutorial like this tutorial as much as I do and I hope uh, and I hope to you learn the uh, you learned enough about the spatial temporal analysis as much as uh, as simple as uh, I could uh, taught you and also you can try this code and learn it and if you faced with any uh, problems regarding to the programming just uh, keep in touch and reach me out in the comments in the Google uh, in the in my YouTube uh, channel and also I will try to help you uh, in this journey for the satellite data analysis in the Google Earth Engine platform. Thank you for watching us.